Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head through to Edinburgh and we're going to revisit one of my favourite Scottish craft breweries and these guys in my opinion are particularly good when it comes to IPAs and paleos and things like this and they have been getting a little bit more experimental over the last year or two and I always get excited when there's something new from these guys when I come home. So for this one we are going to have a taste of another beer from Stuart Brewing. This must be review number 7 or 8 that I've done from these guys and this one is the double IPA version 2 which comes in at 8% ABV and it's hopped at 20 grams per litre with Amarillo, Citra both from America, Galaxy from Australia and then Rakal from New Zealand. So one of the other things I would add about this brewery that I particularly like is the fact that they use New Zealand hops quite prominently in a lot of their beers. If you try like Radical Road, uh, Cap High, I'm not sure if First World Problems had some uh, New Zealand hops in it as well, but these guys use New Zealand hops quite prominently and along with Fallon Brewing, um, I'm not sure there's too many other breweries in Scotland actually do that, so this is one of the main reasons I really quite like this uh, this brewery, because in 2015 I was lucky enough to go to New Zealand and try a lot of these things uh, first hand there and they were awesome, so this is one of the main reasons I really enjoy the beers from Stuart Brewing, so yeah, make sure you check out this brewery if you do get a chance and I'm very much looking forward to trying something new from these guys. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Stuart Brewing before. This must be review number 7 or 8 and I'm sure it'll add more in the fairly near future. There's all the usual social media. Do make sure you check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Scottish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to whenever I get the opportunity. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show on the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Stuart Brewing then, on to my brewery notes. So Stuart Brewing was founded by Steve Stewart along with his wife Jo and Steve is a graduate of Heriot Watt University in Edinburgh who are well known because of their brewing and distilling programme which has given birth to many craft brews across Scotland and across Europe actually. There's a good few of the Icelandic guys went to Heriot Watt for that. But he worked for several breweries including Base Brewery both in Ireland and in Birmingham in England and he also worked for Harpoon Brewery over in Boston in Massachusetts in America too. But while working in Birmingham in 1998 Steve built his first microbrewery with the help of his father-in-law who owns a steel fabrication company. So Steve wanted to return to Scotland and so he left his job with base in Birmingham to move to Edinburgh back in 2002 and he started putting things in place to form the microbrewery and production began officially in 2004 with Steve having developed all the trial brews in his own microbrewery. So Steve worked hard to secure a larger production facility and eventually he settled on a location in the Bilston Glen industrial estate on the south side of Edinburgh and while this site was being completed Steve brewed his beers at the Strathaven Brewery which is a little bit in to the south of Glasgow, Straven as we call it and the first batch of beers was produced in late 2004. But since foundation, this brewery have proved to be very, very successful and they've produced a number of special and seasonal beers in addition to their core range. Um, my personal favourite, I really like the, the Radical Road. I don't know if they still do the Cap High actually, but those are two of my favourite ones. First World Problems is a really great beer as well. Skeleton Keys, the wheat beer, is also really nice as well. Um, but these guys have uh, expanded considerably over the last few years. They've been working to expand their capacity at the brewery quite recently. Recently. They've got a tap room on site now, which I do hope that I can go and visit at some point fairly soon. And they've also got another bar in Leith down by the docks, uh, which is called Dockside uh, Tap. And that's something else I will need to check out the next time I'm through in Edinburgh. But as of September 2019, when I'm filming this review for you, they've produced 127 different types of beer. And now that I think about it, I don't think I've ever tried like a stout or a porter from these guys. They do tend to produce the IPAs and the paleos and stuff like this rather than the darker styles of beer. So that would be an interesting thing to see from them at some point in the future, but I'm sure out of all the 127 beers that they've done, they will um you know, they will have produced some darker beers. I've just probably not come across them yet. And especially with living in Sweden, you know, you don't really see the Stuart beers being exported very much. I actually don't know if they export at the moment, other than to, uh, you know, England and the rest and uh, the other parts of the UK and things like that. But a very, very good brewery and one that you should definitely check out, particularly if, like me, you're a fan of the New Zealand hops. But yeah, that's all you really need to know about Stuart Brewing just now. It's cool to see another brewery that I've always enjoyed expanding a little bit and uh, I will keep an eye out 
out for more beers coming out from these guys soon. But yeah, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself then we can get rid of my brewery notes. So like I said to you, this one is a double IPA coming in at 8% uh, ABV and it's hopped with Amarillo and Citra from America. Amarillo will give you some nice oily oranges and Citra will give you some nice mango and complex tropical fruits. Galaxy is Australian, that will give you some nice passion fruit and pineapple and stuff. And Rakao is quite an interesting one because it will give you um, it, from what I remember it gives you a good bit of apricot but it can also give you some kind of stone fruity berry type qualities to it as well like peaches and things like that. It's a beautiful hop. I think it was um, Hop Federation Brewery in New Zealand that I had a single hop Rakal beer and that was my introduction to this hop and that was beautiful. I mean the New Zealand IPAs that were in the, the, the kind of guise of um, or the farm, if you like, I should say, of West Coast American IPAs. They were really, really good with some of these uh, hops. It'd be cool to go down there and try some of the New Zealand, New England style IPAs with all of these things in it as well. But I have to say, beautiful artwork on this one as well. You know, these sort of computer animations, these are the kind of things that we used to get shown in our uh, biochemistry classes when I was in first and second year of my chemistry masters. Always quite, I always thought some of the graphic work that went into these animations that they would show us for how, you know, like... Uh, bridging proteins and all of this kind of things would work. They were always incredible. So I have to compliment them on their choice of uh, of artwork for this. It really is quite cool. That one looks like a big, uh, some sort of globular protein or some crazy like that. You know, probably, to be honest, just spewing terms that I remember from biochemistry. I was far more into my spectroscopy and, uh, and sort of physical chemistry side of things and uh, uh, analytical chemistry as well. But beautifully presented. There is the Stuart Brewing symbol on this one. Very, very distinct. It was actually quite, you know, it's it's uh, a nice sort of gamma-like symbol, that. And uh, it has the sort of thistle in the background, too. So really nice. It says on the side here, um, Craft Beer Edinburgh, Scotland, double IPA, 8% dry hopped at 20 grams per litre. Double IP, uh, IPA version 2 is every bit as soft and juicy as the original brew, but this time we've switched up the hopping regime. Amarillo and Rakal make their first appearance in the dry hop to bring a pulpy stone fruit flavour uh, to complement the tropical delights brought by Citra and Galaxy. And yeah, that is one of the other things. I mean, Amarillo seems to be getting dropped for Mosaic and things like that these days. Amarillo will give you a nice oily orange, whereas Mosaic, for example, will give you a lighter kind of tangerine. Azaka, Mandarin or Bavaria. I think it's Pacifica is the New Zealand one that will give you the oranges as well. So, kind of cool that, actually, to... Uh, to see Amarillo getting another shout out of these. It's a hop that I always enjoyed. Amarillo Citra and Simcoe, of course, were the old school um, high alpha acid hops, 11-12% alpha acids in these beers. But yeah, let's get this guy out and we will get on with the tasting then. Incidentally, this one is a 440 milliliter can, best before the 1st of June 2020. So yeah, let's get it out and into the glass. And I'm guessing by the looks of this, this one may well be a sort of West Coasty type IPA, and I've been complaining about this on the channel for a while. I've been missing my West Coast IPAs compared to the um, the New England ones. A lot of what people are just doing hazy IPAs these days. I've been missing the more sweeter, caramelly, bready multi bases. But this looks absolutely lovely. Um, it looks very similar to you know the in terms of its appearance to um, Radical Road and Capai and things like that. Radical Road is a really, really good kind of um, go-to sort of IPA paleo type beer. I forget which one it is. I think Capai is the paleo and uh, Radical Road is the IPA. But this looks very, very nice. Um, in terms of colour, I would describe this one as being a very kind of bright, ambery orange colour. I'm not sure how well you're going to see the colour of that on the camera, um, but it looks very, very nice. Definitely a deep, sort of almost blood orangey colour, this one. You could see the head was a bit crazy when it came out, but it's died down to be about two-thirds of a finger. And I would describe this one as being quite... Um, I think this one's quite sort of creamy in colour. I don't think it's perfect white, almost a little bit creamy or ivory or something like that. But one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones heading up towards the bottom of the head. If I put my fingers behind the glass, there you can see there is a degree of haze to this one. But, you know, I don't think it's going to be a, a sort of New England IPA, this one. It definitely looks more along the lines of a sort of West Coast type IPA, this. So let's take a look at the aroma then and just see how we get on with this one. Oh... That smells nice. It's not quite as pungent as I was expecting, I'll say that. But in terms of the um, the fruitiness you get out of here, there's a hell of a lot going on. Um, I mean, straight away you're going to get those big oily oranges coming out of this one. You can really smell the passion fruit from the... Uh, 
from the galaxy in this one mixing in with that and you've also got the mangoes in there so you really can smell the sort of tropical fruits forming the backbone of the beer um, there's a little bit of a peachy quality which I'm guessing will be the Rakao as well um, but the oily oranges there from the Amarillo are really kind of mixing in that. I've got a very good nose for orange so you guys might interpret the aroma a little bit differently from me but um, to me the juicy oranges, the oily oranges jump out of this straight away but you can really smell all the other tropical fruits in there the Rakao is giving you this lovely peachy and apricot -y note and that kind of comes out on the the sort of front of the nose, that is probably the most pungent element of the beer I would say but you can pick up the passion fruit in there too and um, the passion fruit is a sort of stronger and um, almost darker fruit in terms of its aroma and its flavour of course but the uh, the way that the everything goes together on the fruity side of this beer is really unusual but it works very very nicely um, the more you smell of this one as well the more you're picking up different fruits from it I mean there's a little bit of lychee coming out of there, you can pick up a little bit of a limey quality as well, maybe even gooseberries. Those will be the complexities that you'll get from citra, to be honest with you. The citra is the hop in there that's really going to give you the most complexity in terms of different fruits. Um, Galaxy can give you a little bit of pineapple and... Um, I mean, to be honest, it's a bit hard to pick up whether there is specifically pineapple coming out of this one. Because there's, I think the, the Rakao is probably the most uh, pungent hop, I guess I would say, in this one. Um, yeah, to me, in terms of the aroma, it's the Amarillo and the the Rakao that are pushing out there, the juicy oranges and the um, and the sort of peaches and apricots that are really pushing their way out of there. There is almost a little element of a kind of reddish berry fruit quality in there. That will be the Rakao. Um, I don't know whether I want to say it's kind of... It's almost a little bit like red currants, cranberries, a little bit. Um, it's really unusual. I mean, you could sit and smell this beer all day and struggle to pick out what some of the different fruits are because there is so much going on in it in that regard. But what I would say, my advice that I would give to you in this one, is take a little bit of time and just enjoy the fruitiness that this beer has. This is one of the great things that you always get from these Stuart Brewing beers. You know, you, I could sit and smell these all day, but beer was made to be drank. That's the thing you have to remember. So big thumbs up to Stuart Brewing on this one, just for the aroma. That's one of the key things about this beer. It's always half the experience when it comes to whiskey, sake, and craft beer and things like that. It's just enjoying the aroma. Um, so yeah, we'll leave the fruit for the moment because there is so much going on in there. But it, the more you smell of it, it does start to become a little bit more berryish and the other things start to take a bit of a back seat, more berryish and apricotty the more and more you smell of it. In terms of the green side of the hops, I would say this one is leaning towards the grassy side of things. There's not too much in the way of a floral quality kind of pushing its way out of this one. Um, I'm not picking up really any earthiness out of it, which is interesting. There's a little touch of floral quality there, but mainly grassy in terms of the, the green side of things. So on the malty side of things, at the malty part of the beer, um, I would say there's a little bit of a white bready quality in there. It almost has a little touch of a doughy note to it. And I do wonder what yeasts they actually use in their beers at Stuart because they always seem to have this nice, soft, slightly doughy, bready quality to their beers. And that's one of the things that I really like about it as well. I think they must have house yeasts um, because they always come across as very unique in their malt bases compared to other breweries that you get here in Scotland. But um, yeah, a little bit of a biscuity sweetness in there which does help bring out some of the orangey qualities of the beer. Um, and a little bit of a doughy kind of white bread. Other than that, I don't think there's all that much to say about the malt base. The real focus of this beer is the fruity side of the hops. So um, yeah, a hell of a lot of fruity esters coming out of this one, but big thumbs up to Stuart Brewing on the aroma of this beer. So let's have a taste of it then and see how we get on. This one is the double IPA version two, coming in at 8% ABV from Stuart Brewing in the southern part of Edinburgh and the Bilston Glen Industrial Estate. Let's get stuck into this one. Slanja, school, cheers. That's really pretty good actually. Um, one thing I'll also should say I should say about this beer, this is the booziest beer I've ever had from Stuart Brewing. You know, um, at eight percent, it's it's def. I mean, I, if I remember correctly, I think um, First World Problems is like seven percent, seven point two, maybe even seven point five. It's somewhere in that kind of region. So this is the booziest beer that I've had 
from Stuart Brewing and it comes, it's kind of strange because obviously you know I really like Radical Road and Cap Eye and this one just feels like it's almost like a kind of amped up version of that but I think they've taken the IBUs of this beer down a little bit and obviously that's probably just to kind of reflect the direction that the market's going in these days. Everyone's, the, the, the IBUs in beer tends to be dropping back these days because of the obsession that you have with um, with New England IPAs. So this is definitely a little bit less hoppy and bitter compared to some of the other ones that I've had, but it's a bloody good beer. Make no mistake about that. Yeah, that's really pretty nice actually. It really does you know, if you if you know what the Stuart beers are like, you could blind taste this one and be like, yep, yeah, that's a Stuart beer. It's, and it's the malt base and the way the yeasty qualities come out that sort of give it away. And, and I like that when breweries do that. I like when they've got their own um, base, if you like, and then they just play around with the things on top of that. Um, so yeah, with this beer then, you've got that nice, smooth, white, bready quality. That blankets the middle of your tongue. The further you go into the aftertaste, you can feel that breadiness just kind of thickening up a little bit. Um, and in the centre of your tongue, there's a little bit of a, a kind of sweetness in there. It's not quite strong enough and sweet enough to be caramel. It is more of a sort of biscuity quality. And it does become a little bit grainy the further that you go into the aftertaste. But the middle of your palate really is dominated by this smooth. And it's almost kind of fluffy, actually. It's this sort of smooth white, fluffy, bready flavour uh, and I like that. That's for me is the kind of trademark of the Stuart Brewing beers. They always get a nice little bit of that smoothness underneath their malt base. Some of them do have a little bit more caramel than this one and in fairness you do get the impression of there being a little bit of brown sugar in there and that's probably because this beer is a little bit higher in its alcohol content. But I do like this. I mean this is a big oily IPA and it's got, um, I mean, it does, the more I drink of it, it actually does have a little bit of an almost, it's almost got a little bit of a kind of farmhouse quality to it, I mean, there's something um, with the yeast in here, it does remind me a little bit of the, the sort of yeast you'll get from Heady Topper and I was talking about this in some of my Swedish IPA reviews. Um, the original New England IPAs, they use the, these farmhouses and they almost give you this kind of herbally, vegetal kind of thing in the middle of your palate too. And if you drink more and more of this beer, you actually start to get that in the middle of the palate too. I mean, it is it is almost just a little bit kind of farmhousey, and um, Not quite sharp and astringent like you're getting from some of these Kvaik IPAs that are coming out from these yeasts from Voss in, uh, in Norway. But this has got a really nice, smooth, bready quality to it there. And for me, that's the kind of trademark that I've noticed from Stuart Bruin over the last while. But it's not a, it's not quite as sweet and biscuity and caramelly as you'll get from the slightly lower alcohol beers that Stuart do. But I like the way that everything goes together. It's not too in your face with that slight farmhouse quality, but you'll notice that a little bit further forward on your palate with this beer, you do get a little bit of that slightly herbal, vegetally, farmhousey kind of quality that the yeasts in these New England IPAs can give you. I think generally, um, if we're talking about this beer in the diff in the context of the different sub-styles of IPAs, this one it is leaning towards that New England end of the spectrum. But it's got a root and it's it is more farmhousey. It's not the creamiest of New England IPs. It's definitely more kind of farmhousey rather than anything else. But I like what it's doing here. But let's focus on the hops now. That's enough about the malt base. Um There is almost a little bit of a kind of with the big oily fruit qualities that you're getting out of this one. And again, that's one of the other things I really like about Stuart Brewing. This beer does almost have a little bit of a medicinally cough syrupy type quality to it, but obviously a bit lighter in terms of the fruity notes. So on the hoppy side of things, back corners of your palate, there is definitely a little touch of earthiness there, and probably all of the hops in this will um, will sort of contribute to that a little bit. But as you come further forward along the sides of the tongue, it's a little bit kind of herbal and smooth. There is a little bit of that there. And as you move forward towards the front of the palate, it's a little bit more grassy and floral around the very front curve of the tongue that's where you get some of the lighter grassy elements of the beer then behind the front curve of the palate that's where you get that really nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer and you know as the aroma was indicating there's a hell of a lot going on with this beer in terms of fruitiness so yeah um, at the back of that oily bubble then 
for me, there's a little bit of a passion fruity note, and that it's quite minimal that though compared to other things that are going on in the beer. As you move further forward, you start to get the mangoes, and the, the mangoes and the passion fruit are sort of interacting together a little bit, and as you push further forward from that, that's when you start to get the tangerine oranges. But you can feel that the apricotty, peachy flavours that the Rakao is giving you, that's kind of mixing in with both the oranges and the um, the passion fruit and the mangoes that I was talking about. There's there's a whole host of things going on here. It really, it, this beer, in terms of its fruity quality, it really just feels that you've taken a load of fruits and mashed it into a jam and made it up like that. It's really quite unusual in that sort of sense, to be honest with you. At the front part of the palate, though, if you just go to the very front curve of your tongue, then behind it a little bit, um, that's where you start to get some of the complexities from the galaxy and from the... Uh, the Raquel will be giving you some of that as well, and also the Citra. The Amarillo, I've found, is a very straight-up hop, um, but the other ones can give you a little bit of complexity when you, you sort of linger on them a little bit. So for me, there is a little bit of a slightly limey quality to this one. Um, you're also getting some peachiness in there. It's not the, sh the peach isn't quite sharp and that's one of the things I always found that peach to me was a very sharp fruit and remember flavours are subjective they can come out differently for different people but to me sh uh, the peachy flavours were always a little bit sharp and um, but there's definitely a bit of a berry element to this one and that comes out a little bit more into the aftertaste that'll be the racal that's giving you that. I said cranberries in the aroma but I'm not quite sure I would agree with that but there is definitely a sort of berry element but it's quite difficult to pick up exactly what it is but for me a little bit of limey quality definitely some lychee notes in there um, there is a bit of apricot too now that I think about it there's definitely a bit of apricot in there and that'll be the racal that's giving you that um, so that I really like how that kind of goes together but you can feel the sort of farmhousey qualities that sort of herbally vegetal farmhousey kind of thing that's going on. You can really feel that pushing forward on the tongue and interacting with the fruity side of things. This beer really does come across as being a little bit sort of uh, jammy and things like that. Um, so there's a lot of interesting things going on in this one. Um, this one it's definitely quite different compared to what I've had from Stuart before. It's not quite as um, caramelly and things like that. And I mean in some ways I would say that this beer it almost comes across as being a little bit of a hybrid between a New England and a West Coast IPA. And to me, the way that the fruits come out in this beer, I think it might have actually been better to go with the West Coast uh, side of things with this and put a little bit of caramel in this. Um, but as it stands, it is still a very, very solid beer. And I like the way that everything goes together in it. So it's a little bit like a... If I was trying to put this into the substyles, it's like it has the New England malt base and flavours to it and that sort of farmhouse element of an old school New England IPA such as like Heady Topper and things like that. But it does have the more oily fruitiness that you would expect of a West Coast IPA and there's more and more IPAs kind of fitting into this sort of grey area between the two styles these days because you know you can see the West Coast influence starting to creep back into the New England IPAs these days. So yeah. Um, West Coast fruitiness in this one, but New England sort of yeast and malt qualities. So it's a really interesting hybrid of different things here. The main question would be, would you drink this beer again? Yes, but I would also add that I'd love to see them, you know, take everything in this beer, but try it as a West Coast IP. I think that would be a really, pardon me, interesting move to do with this one. But it's really good. You know, I wouldn't expect anything less from Stuart Brown. They're very solid in this kind of IPA uh, category, if you like. And it's cool to see them changing things up a little bit and, you know, brewing the more modern craft beers, if you like. So, thumbs up to Stuart Brewing for this one. And I'm curious to see what this double IPA series has over the next little while. I did read in some of the Facebook groups, people were saying that they preferred the original one to this. So, it'll be interesting to see what they do with um, version 3, if you like. And I will see if I can get some of the other IPAs and things like that reviewed. It'd be cool to see this brewery do a stout or a scotch ale or something like that, something on the malty end of the spectrum too. Um, but in terms of the mouthfeel then, I would describe this beer as being pretty full-bodied and that's one of the things I would always say about Stuart beers is they are pretty big and oily in their mouthfeels. So yeah, nice big full-bodied beer this one. Carbonation is quite smooth, really big oily mouthfeel rather than anything else. In terms of hoppy bitterness, um, really not that much. It's a New England bitterness that this beer has. You know, you're talking about 25, 30 IBUs at an absolute push. So quite light in terms of its hoppy bitterness, this beer. Um, malt base, 
and you know we have to put the yeasty qualities in there as well. Definitely quite smooth, not as sweet. You will get a little bit of sweetness out of their lower alcohol beers that they do, and you've got a nice big oily fruity quality that I was talking about as well. So a really interesting beer this one. It's cool to see Stuart experimenting a little bit more and also becoming a little bit more prolific in the beers that they're producing. But um, really cool to have a taste of this one. And it's cool to try, you know, something more experimental from these guys too. But one of my favourite Scottish breweries, and you know, when they're producing stuff like this, um, that kind of shows why I'm glad to see that they're getting a little bit more um, kind of experimental in what they're doing. So big thumbs up to Stuart Brewing for this one. But let's leave it at that. So once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Stuart Brewing as well. Uh, and let me know which beers. I've not reviewed a Stuart beer in maybe a year or two, I think, before this one. So do let me know which ones I need to kind of catch up on, if you like. That would be great for your help with that. But a great brewery, this one, and it's cool to see them becoming a little bit more prolific and experimental, if you like. But make sure you check out my social media. Thank you again for watching, and I will catch you guys very soon. The double IPA version 2 from Stuart Brewing Company in, uh, through in Edinburgh, the Bilston Glen Industrial Estate in the south of the city. Until the next time, it's just now, and I'll catch you guys later. Slangin, skull, cheers.